Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. The politics of political pressure. Florida Governor Christ vetoes abortion ultrasound bill. I'm Matt Barber, Director of Cultural Affairs with Liberty Council and Associate Dean with Liberty University School of Law. In for Matt Staver today and joining me in studio once again is Sean Akers, Dean of Liberty University's Helms School of Government and Policy Analyst with Liberty Council. Well, Sean, a couple weeks ago, uh, it was on uh, the national media radar Governor Charlie Crist, who is uh, currently running for uh, the United States Senate in the state of Florida. He is uh, the sitting governor of the state of Florida. Uh, The uh, Florida legislature overwhelmingly passed a pro-life bill that would uh, simply require that a woman uh, have full disclosure of what she was uh, engaged in and what was what was involved in her having an abortion. Uh, Governor Christ, who has uh, long, and and, and according to LifeSite News, who has repeatedly claimed over the years to be pro-life, there was a question as to whether or not he would stand firm on his purported pro-life views or whether he would veto this uh, measure uh, for political expediency. Uh, Well, it it appears we have our answer uh, on uh, July 11th, I believe it was, uh, Governor Christ, in fact, uh, vetoed the bill that would have required an ultrasound uh, to be performed on abortion-bound women. And, uh, boy, he was lobbied by uh, Planned Parenthood, NARAL, uh, the massive multi-billion dollar abortion industry, as well as other groups on the left, other politicians. He was lobbied. And uh, from my perspective, he he caved to the political pressure, compromising his purported principles, uh, again, for political expediency. And unfortunately, it's the uh, it's unborn children that uh, suffer the blunt, uh, the brunt of this uh, this veto. You know, this is one of those things, uh, Matt, where where morality and a moral compass has been. Uh, outshined by uh, a political play by a sitting governor who would very much like to rise to the seat of senator. And in fact, he was called out on that. Um, it was State Representative Matthew Getz that he's a Republican from Fort Walton Beach that said immediately after the veto that unborn life will be, as a result of the veto, that unborn life will be destroyed at the expense of taxpayers. The governor lacks party affiliation. Today, we learned he also lacks a moral compass. Uh, this is being seen in most circles as Chris reaching out to those moderate center voters because that's what he would need to put together a coalition uh, to get himself uh, elected under an independent banner. The, you know, and on some things, Matt, you can see where that would be uh, a decent thing to, to compromise here, to compromise there on fiscal policy or on one thing or another. But the thing that he's chosen as a banner to compromise on here or the life of unborn children, and not a, a, not a technically terrible bill for either side. All that this requires is that a woman who is seeking an abortion has to be fully informed and actually take a look at an ultrasound of the life in her womb and then make an informed decision after that of whether you really want to terminate uh, that baby's life or not. Uh, you know, that's all that they're asking here is that you actually, you know, look the baby in the eye, so to speak before you make your decision. That's all it was. Yeah. And Chris, for political gain, appears to have, uh, have have chosen to keep the baby hidden away in darkness and silence and let the mother well, make the decision in yeah. a more isolated way. Well, Sean, I mean, you know, that that is what so many people loathe 
about politics, loathe about politicians, this this notion that in order to to get elected or reelected, that they would put their finger to the wind and do what they feel is most politically expedient, you know, f- from a political standpoint, casting aside principle, you know, boy, just re- remember the days of, for instance, a, a Ronald Reagan who didn't care what the public said, didn't care what the media said. He went straight to we the people uh, and stood firm on his principles, on his beliefs. You know, I think uh, Chris, you know, over the years has held himself out as a conservative. I think he he saw that that Marco Rubio had wrapped up uh, the primary, the Republican spot for the United States Senate. So he left the Republican Party and, and is now running as an independent. I think he also sees that Rubio has wrapped up essentially, uh, or perceives, I, I would speculate, and, and I think we have quite a bit of evidence to support this, that, that he perceives Rubio having wrapped up the conservative vote. So what's he doing? Well, he's you know, trying to find the path of least resistance here. He's moving uh, toward the left as quickly as he possibly can. Um, apparently, he's no longer pro-life, but now he's you know so-called pro-choice. Well, uh, Governor Christ said in a statement that this bill, again, a central tenet of, of in the medical field is informed consent, Sean. You don't withhold information about a, a condition a person has or a procedure they're about to go through. You give them all the available information uh, 